Well, summer is slowly coming to an end here in Northwest Ohio. And as I mentioned before, we didn't get a chance to do much with a summer garden, with a typical garden this year. And so this is part two of a two, maybe a three part series where I wanted to talk about um, doing a cold frame. Because I thought, wouldn't it be amazing to salvage my garden year by doing something I've never done and being able to harvest fresh greens and fresh vegetables in the cold of winter it's so boring and kind of depressing sometimes when you're stuck you know here and it would be just wonderful to see uh, get your hands dirty in the soil again and harvest fresh vegetables and what got me kind of thinking about this actually started years ago on some uh, a handbook and a, a book i had read about um, elliot coleman and what he did at his farm uh, to do four season gardening as he called it or a four season harvest and then it was kind of renewed when I saw this book here by Nikki Jabour called Year Round Vegetable Gardener. And she makes it really accessible. I recommend this book and I absolutely recommend you read anything by Elliot Coleman. Yes, yeah, so I just thought, wouldn't it be amazing to be able to have life and to harvest vegetables in wintertime? And so I decided to build a cold frame. So if you go back to the first video uh, on this series, if you can go to our channel and look at the playlist or you can just go through our list of videos um, but it's uh, building a cold frame with polycarbonate and you can see how I did mine but if you're just watching this video first you might say well what in the world is a cold frame kind of like a small greenhouse is how it how I would consider a cold frame they come in all shapes and sizes all price points but basically you're taking um, you're altering the environment by using uh, some sort of glazing, whether it be polycarbonate or a double insulated, um, you know, flexible like sheets of plastic, uh, an old shower door, old glass windows and what have you. I built mine out of twin wall polycarbonate and I'll take you in the backyard here real quick and I'll show you um, what that looks like and how that finished up. But basically you've got, you know, sides and a top that lets light in but it helps keep the cold out. So you're changing that environment around those plants. So uh, I wanna be careful to mention, I said a, a winter time harvest because the plants don't actually do a whole lot of growing in the winter. Part of that has got to do with your sunlight. Once the hours of sunlight start to dip below, like say nine hours, plants naturally just really slow down. Um, their growth cycle and you combine that with the cold temperatures you you have plants that if you pick them correctly they'll be cold hardy plants like spinach arugula kale turnips beets uh, carrots and so forth brussels sprouts they will survive and they will um, they will live but they won't necessarily grow and so that's what I'm going to be planting in my cold frame are these cold hardy varieties now, depending on where you live, that's, that's always going to be variable. We are in Northwest Ohio, and I think we are like a 6B zone. Um, so, you know, we can get, <clears throat> we can get fairly cold, um, but we get a lot of winds where we're at. It's very flat here in Northwest Ohio. And so I've got my cold frame built, you know, fairly sturdy, and I might even put bales of straw on the east and the west sides of it to protect it even more. Um, but I'm going to be filling that with those lettuce varieties that are quick growing, um, some of them I can cut them and, and they'll keep growing back like the spinach, the kale I'm just going to probably uh, plant along the back of it where it's sloped and it'll be taller. Um, but anyway, you can do all kinds of things. You can do a cold frame as simply as taking bales of straw and putting them in a square and laying like an old storm door or a shower door across it or old window panes. Um, you could even take two by fours and make a big frame and put like a, a clear panel or a plastic panel across it. Just something that is going to act kind of like a mini greenhouse uh, to keep those plants alive in wintertime. And it's important to remember that the cold hardy varieties that I'm going to be planting are the kind where they can freeze and then as the day warms up and the, and the temperature inside the cold frame warms up, the plants will thaw out, the leaves will thaw out, and then you can harvest them and it's not going to hurt them. Um, so that's what we're going to do. So anyway, let's go around to the backyard and I will show you my cold frame. Okay, so we're going to try to talk here real quick in between the really loud cicadas that are buzzing in my backyard. Anyway, here is the uh, cold frame that I put together. And this one is 8 feet long, 
It's just under four feet uh, deep, and I used a twin wall, six millimeter polycarbonate panel on the top of that. If you go back to my first video, you can see that in more detail. But these are all hinged. You can go inside here. It's got a little bit of reflective insulation. And this side over here, I've got two different door openings. And this is going to ultimately have a, an automatic greenhouse vent opener. So if the temperature gets too warm in here, it'll pop this uh, center door open. You can kind of walk around. I've got steel roofing on the side of it for durability and low maintenance. And the back of it is just one by sixes. Um, this is all stained, but you can see all the details and how I put that together. So I'm excited to do this. We're going to try to salvage the gardening year. But the question I've got is, where am I going to put this? This is a big cold frame. And I'm not sure where we're going to put it. So we're going to walk around a little bit. And I've got some ideas. And we can kind of go around here. But for you, what you have to keep in mind, what you need to do is you want to have your cold frame in an area, ideally where it's south facing because it really needs that sunlight to warm up on the inside and to let the plants grow. So I had all our chickens back here. What's up girls? What's up boy, Mr. Rooster? And so for us, our house faces south and I've got a great southern exposure, but our house is kind of split on a county road and I've got a half an acre on one side of the road and a half an acre on the other where our house is. And I'll kind of turn the camera around here. <clears throat> you can see here is our one fence. Here's our little road. And then across the street is kind of where we've been putting most of our, uh, our growing. So we've got like a little orchard. I've got a peach tree, cherry tree, three apple trees, grapes, asparagus, our sunflowers, and our little garden patch over there. That was our first garden. And we're just kind of adding to it as we feel comfortable. But I'm thinking about um, putting our cold frame maybe on this side of the street over by our house. Because from what I want to use it for, you know, it's going to be snowy, it'll be cold out. And I'm just thinking that Joanna or myself or whatever, I just think it would be great to come right down the front steps with some scissors and come out here and brush the snow off the top, lift the lid and just, you know, get in there and get some greens for a nice uh, summer salad or for our uh, breakfast smoothies and so forth. And so I think I want to keep it close. I think, not that we get a lot of snow, but I think we're more likely to use it the less we have to walk. And it's, you know, close to our kitchen. Now, we're underneath some big maple trees, but of course, in the fall, they're gonna lose their leaves. Winter time, they'll have bare leaves. Over here is to the west, and everything here that I'm facing is south. So there's no obstructions anywhere. I'll get lots of sunlight that's gonna come down right into this area in the winter time. But for, for my purposes, I'm going to take my cold frame and I'm going to put it right on the ground and I'm going to make a new garden bed out of it. You know, I'll have to come in and stake out the area and mark it for the right dimensions, pull the sod off, maybe cultivate that a little bit, maybe work in some uh, compost to get ready here. And that's what I'm going to do today is basically show you how I'm going to get my cold frame from the backyard situated here and getting it ready. Now I won't actually plant things in there for a little bit, but I need to get stuff done now because things are going to get busy because we're going to come into firewood season and like I said, all these other home projects. So here we are at the end of uh, August and uh, coming into the first week of September over the weekend and I want to get this cold frame in place. So let's go, let's check it out.
Okay, so that took maybe, I don't know, 20, 25 minutes. Got all this sod stripped off the top. Just careful to shake the dirt off of it. Keep as much here as we can. And I'll rake over this and get any little bits of grass, weeds out and so forth. Um, but take a look at this, my soil, we're blessed here with really nice soil. Uh, it's a very sandy, loamy soil. Um, this actually, I guess thousands of years ago, used to be one of the shores of Lake Erie. And that's why we're up on a ridge, like a sandy ridge, because uh, if you go north of us, that's where the lake bed would have been. And it would lap up on the shore and it built this ridge and then it receded north up into Bowling Green. There's another sand ridge and then it receded north again. I don't know how far, but up to the point where it's the present day shores of Lake Erie. And so it's nice sandy soil. It drains well. It's uh, easy to plant in. It's easy to work with. I have to watch out for the pH level because it gets more of on the alkaline side, which is not good. Um, so I will probably do a little soil test here to check the alkalinity before I put my cold frame on here. Um, and then I'll kind of think about if I want to put some amendments in here, like either some compost or some composted manure, or if it's alkaline, I could put like some sulfur or some peat moss in that I've got and kind of just lightly cultivate that in before we come over and we set the cold frame on this area. So I'm going to add in this little bag here of earthworm casings that will add a little bit of uh, you know good nutrients but it'll build the organic matter up going to be putting in a small bag here of peat moss. Peat moss is good because it will help, I think, acidify the soil a little bit here. And we have a problem with that because sandy soils are, are a lot of times are more alkaline and peat moss will help raise the or lower the pH and release more nutrients and it will also help hold moisture and build the organic matter. And then finally, I'm going to put in some of this organic uh, fertilizer for uh, plants for garden vegetables. And I'm going to do this at a very low rate. We're just going to do about three cups over the course of the... going to rake this in to the surface. Okay, so we've got it moved in place, and I've got some uh, bricks that were left over. I borrowed them from Jenna and Ben down the road, and I'm just going to put these bricks underneath the wood frame. Um, even though I've stained that, I'm still going to put this um, underneath it, uh, so this wood frame doesn't have contact with the ground, and that'll help, I think, preserve this from rotting.
Okay, I've got this in place. And I put the bricks underneath it to keep it so it's not totally touching the earth. And the ground was a bit uneven in the front. So I had an extra four by four and I kind of sunk that down in there hoping that no critters would get underneath it. And then you can see on the inside here, everything's all nice under glass. Kind of go in here. And of course, this door can, this will be the vent door. I still have to put the vent on. But basically along the back row here, I'm gonna put my kale. So I'll probably do like one or two rows of kale along the back. And, you know, I don't have to let them grow full height. I'll kind of just keep harvesting them, maybe when they get a foot tall or 16 inches tall. So I'm gonna basically do, my game plan is to do one third of this in arugula, one third of this in the mache, and one third of this in spinach. And we'll see how it goes. Let's get over here out of the sun. So, anyway, that's it for part two. Like I said, you can go back to part one and see how I put this together. But the idea is I'm gonna use this cold frame for a winter harvest. So I've already got my kale in the seed trays. And actually, since I recorded that part of the video, it's been about three days and I've already got about 50% uh, germination. I've got little seedlings coming up. And so those will go along the back and I'm gonna direct sow my spinach, arugula, and mache um, because those are all relatively quick growing. I'm gonna put those in probably, um, the arugula I can wait till like October, but I will probably plant the uh, spinach and uh, mache uh, either probably like in late September here um, because like I said, I'm looking at the first week of November where we lose our daylight. And the temperatures here, it's kind of a mixed bag. We've had snow on October 14th, I can remember. And sometimes we don't get snow and it doesn't get cold till in December. So it's kind of a real chaotic environment where we're at. But hopefully this gives you some good motivation to make your own cold frame. I'm excited about it. This is our test run on our little homestead. And if it works out well, I'll probably do more cold frames along my sunroom, which is being renovated and I might even make that one higher and then I'll come out in front of that and do one similar to what I did here and put that in here. So I could have very easily three or four cold frames um, for us to have nice uh, produce harvest all winter long. So thank you for watching this Ohio farmhouse. We'll see you next week with another video.